So what is a 3D printer? The short answer is a 3D printer converts computer files into actual things. And there's many different kinds of 3D printers, but the one I purchased was a Replicator 2X from MakerBot, and it prints in plastic. Now, one of the reasons this is huge is because if you can create a 3D computer model of an object, you can print it as well as share it, and others can also print that same object as well. It's pretty awesome technology, and I'm going to bring you along on my unboxing, setting up, and test printing. I think it's a pretty good deal. <laughs> And I hope to make some fun stuff. I had to wait for this thing for like two months. It's crazy. Oh. Comes with a nice little pamphlet. I'm sure I'll need that. Let's get this fun thing off. You know, I think there's a video that shows you how to like unbox this and I'm not watching it. Well, look at this. It says, my enclosure lid may ship separately. I don't have my enclosure lid. I haven't gotten it yet. And this has been sitting here for, oh, golly, at least two weeks now because I've been on vacation. I don't have to call about that. I think what I'm going to do is just grab this thing and pull it out. Alright. Maybe the lid's in the bottom. I don't know. No. No. Alright, so this appears to be the main machine. This is, this is the door. It's kind of fun. I feel like I feel like it's Christmas again. Plexiglass door. Maybe an eighth of an inch thick. So I have the two X. Really nice. I think I'm going to get it on a table, though, and let you guys take a closer look at it. I don't have a lid. They didn't send me a lid, and this has been sitting here because I've been on vacation. That's a little disappointing, but I'm going to call them, and we'll see, see if we can get this lid shipped out to us. Get it on the table. It's beautiful. Well constructed. Looks pretty strong. Pretty tough. I'm going to take the camera off just so you guys can get a better look at this thing. Oh, there I am. Looks like we'll put a handle on there. I'm pretty excited to start messing around with this thing. It's got windows on the front and the two sides. And there's there's supposed to be a lid that goes on top of it. This is probably the extruders right here. Alright. Good stuff. Let's cut this out. This is the plastic. These are the plastic guides. We got some kind of toolkit with some cables. I have no idea what that is. I'm gonna have to read the instructions. Power cord. There it goes. Came with some plastic. I did not know that. I bought a bunch of plastic. That's a good thing to know. So this is just plain natural ABS. It's fun. Fun stuff. So this must be plastic too, I'm guessing. I could be wrong. It's a power supply. Oh, I was right. It is. Cool. So it does come with some free plastic. That's awesome. 
excited about that. Where's the power supply? This looks like the power power supply. Obviously, it's going to be pretty easy to hook up. What is this stuff? I'm guessing this is for the build plate. These are little sheets of plastic, probably that you, you put down on the build plate to protect the build plate build plate from getting worn I guess and this is just a spacer All right. let's come back and take a look at this tool bag with this stuff. okay there's a USB cable here's the handle that's gonna be easy to put on I know what these are these are for the plastic uh, essentially you hang the plastic on the back on those things we got some Allen wrenches, some sort of silicone, some kind of scraper. We got a support card, a bunch of different Allen wrenches. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the handle on because that's probably the easiest thing. I'm going to screw this up. Can't be too bad. Plus everything needs a handle, right? Something I'm noticing as I'm looking at it is it appears to be covered in dust or something. It's like everywhere. I know you can't see it on here, but it's not so much on the plexiglass, but on the build platform and on the inside, there is dust everywhere. I don't know if you guys can see this on my fingers, but interesting. I'll have to clean it off. So these guys are pretty much on there. So now I got my handle. Okay, so I've added a light so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to cut these zip ties, which are essentially holding the extruder um, set in place. This looks like it was 3D printed. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to get this thing out of here. And let's get this other one. That, this was 3D printed, definitely. You can just kind of look at it and tell. Hmm. Let's get this guy out of here. I think I might need another light. I'm trying not to touch anything. Now when we move this guy closer, you can also see that there is, there it is, there's a, uh, like this yellow thing that holds it. Let's take that thing off. How does this work? There it goes. There we go. I'm gonna, this also looks like it was 3D printed. So we're gonna hang on to those. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the plastic guides that up. I hope I'm doing this right. This I could be wrong because this is really wimpy. And there's gonna be a place back here for these clip on. I'll turn the camera around in a second so you guys can see this. I guess these these levers are for when I actually put the plastic in there. I'm not reading the manual, we're just kind of having fun with this as we go. So let me turn that around. When I grab it, I'm, I'm trying just to kind of grab it by the housing and not these metal bars that the extruder is moving around on, because that might mess the alignment up. But you can see that these uh, plastic guides just kind of snap in right here. Just pop these in. Now the next thing I want to do, back this guy up. I'm going to put the plastic holders on, which look like they go like that. That's right. Just like that. I have a bunch of plastic of all kinds. Plug in my power supply. Got a better light on here so we can see what's going on. You know, 
curious to, sorry, reach in front of you, but um, curious to see how how hard or how easy this is going to be. It may be, you know, it may be a lot harder than I think, what people are anticipating. If I can't figure this out, then people are going to be unhappy with it. It needs to be easy to use. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so that's in. Plugging. Just, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like this rep, like this dusty residue all over it. Maybe they're just really busy. I don't know. Plug that in. Drop that behind the table and get it plugged into the wall. So I did buy a bunch of other plastic because I didn't know it came with some. So let's, I don't even remember what I ordered, but it was a while ago. Let's see. What I got? Oh, I ordered a bunch. Okay. So I have six kilograms. I got black, safety orange, fluorescent red, Helsinki blue. I got glow in the dark and metallic silver. So this is what they, these are the boxes they come in. Let's take a look at each of these. So this is one kilogram, 2.2 pounds. It looks like the spool that you buy from them is actually a little bit bigger than the ones that come. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. I don't know, is that right? So, so let's just go ahead and do this. Yeah. So this is the starter one that came with it. And this is the one that you buy. These are about, I think they're about 50 bucks each, if it's just regular. Um, the silver looks more like a shiny gray. It's not metallic or anything, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, let's, all right, let's just take a look at this one. If you guys are watching, might as well. I have some things I want to make. I have some very specific things in mind. So it's a really bright, beautiful blue color. And it feels like weed whacker plastic. That's essentially what it looks like and feels like. So I got some nice blue. I'm going to save the box. Red we've seen. I got some safety orange. It's like a really bright orange color. Black, red. I'll put it cool in the dark too. These are vacuum sealed. I don't know why they do that. Maybe I don't think plastic gets oxidized, but I don't know. It's a really bright orange color. And let's take a look at the glow in the dark one. Black is black. I guess that's not too interesting. So. This one was a little bit more expensive because it glows in the dark. That'll be fun to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and use the plastic that they shipped me. Well, that thing kind of just pops off. And is it, are you squeeze? Okay, so you're, you're squeezing the, these kind of guys together. Do it from the inside. Might be easier to take this thing off. I don't know, is that possible to do? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. See this funky end here? We're not going to feed that up to that tube. So we're going to come underneath like this. This is what I'm guessing. We're just going to feed that plastic up there. And wait till it almost comes to the extruder. I'll just leave it there. Same thing with this guy. In there like that. This is exciting. Oh my God, oh my God. Then we're going to feed that right up there. I want my lid. MakerBot. Okay, so that looks like it's ready to go. So I think we're ready. I think we're ready to plug this thing in. This is exciting. This is really exciting. I'm excited. You know? I am. I'm excited. I don't get excited very easily. Okay. 
Okay, what a nice looking machine. So I've turned my ISO way up so you guys can see this, but the build plate is like covered in some kind of dust. And uh, I want to clean that off. I don't really have a vacuum to vacuum it off, but I do have some photographer's lens cleaning stuff that I'll probably use to clean it up, but it's just everywhere. Really, usually pretty good at grabbing lint. I don't want to mess anything up, but this thing is just filthy. Looks a lot better. So what I'm going to do is really get everything off of here. It looks like there's a scratch right here. The edges of the build plate and the edges of like the, plex the plexiglass are, are kind of rough. It almost looks like somebody, not somebody, it looks like it was thrown together a little quick. I don't know. And it's dirty. I don't like that at one bit. Yeah, these edges are, are kind of rough. So, I'm reaching behind the MakerBot, turning it on, and we get an LED display lighting up. I'm going to replicate it 2x, press the M to get started. So when it ships, that level, the platform does move, and... Um, So, making noises. So under the build platform, there are three little knobs. There's two in the front and there's this one in the back. And I guess this is how you calibrate it or adjust the actual build platform is you can adjust the height of the platform by turning those screws. And so the instructions it's giving us right now, if I turn my ISO down and I focus in, it says tighten each of the three knobs under the build platform about four turns. Well, I'm looking at the extruder and the extruder up here is, I'll show you. It looks like it's actually touching the build platform. I don't know if we want that. Tighten each of the three knobs under the build platform about four turns. What direction? One, two, three, four. One, two. This is loosening it up. Okay. I'm going to move my extruder around to different points so you can check the height. At each point, loosen the specified knob until the nozzle almost touches the build plate. The nozzle at the right height. The nozzle is at the right height when a thin piece of paper will slide between the nozzle and build plate with some friction. Please wait. This is making me nervous. Okay. It's not touching. So I have this little piece of paper that came with the box. They say it's about a tenth of a millimeter thick. Adjust the rear knob until the paper just slides between the nozzle and the plate. So what I'm gonna do is take this card that came with it, slide it back here between the extruder and the plate. I'm going to tighten it until there's a little bit of friction. Two. I can feel it. It's right there. Very close. Just a little teeny bit. I feel good about that. There is friction, but it's not too bad. That side's a little looser. I wonder if it's tilted. Coming to the front now. 
it's a bit easier to videotape. Record, yeah, see all this gunk? It's crazy. So we're gonna do it again up here, and here's the card. I don't want to touch anything I'm not supposed to. It's pretty loose right now. Tighten it up. Three turns. A little bit of friction on the right nozzle head. This might be too much. It's actually pretty good right there. This one's loose. Okay. Turn the other side. Super loose. Two, three, nope, four, nope. There it is. That might be too tight. Just loosen it up just a little bit. So we have friction on both of them. And we hit the M. Now I'm going to send my extruder to all three points again to recheck. Okay, I'm ready. First, we'll load the right extruder, push the filament in. Oh my gosh, look, it's already coming out. I had some, <laughs> I had some plastic in there already. It's already, looks like it's already taken hold, the white stuff at least. I hope I don't damage this thing. So what I'm gonna do is push the, why? Oh, maybe that's leftover. I bet that's freaking hot, yeah? It's probably left over. Okay, because the filament's not coming through yet. So what I'm doing here is I am feeding the plastic through the guide, and I'm gonna just going to start pushing it into this thing. Just push it in there, I guess. I pushed it in. And until you feel the motor tug it in. Push for a few more seconds, then wait. All right. I'm pushing. Oh, there it goes. Oh, wait, maybe not. I'm pushing. Do you see anything in it? Yeah, lots. Is it coming out? Yeah. On the right side, it's starting to come through here. It's purple. I'm gonna wait. I am waiting. We're waiting. When the filament is being extruded from the nozzle, press M to stop extruding. All right. Yes, it did. Great. So now it wants me to do the left extruder. Push filament through until you feel the motor tug it in. Push for a few more seconds and wait. Be good to me. Anything? Mm -hmm. Is it red? You don't know? No, it's red. No, it's red? Mm -hmm. I think these are supposed to be open. There it is. Oh, that one's really coming out. Okay. Um, like models that come with it. Traffic cone, pendant. What should we print? A nut and bolt, Mr. Jaws, cut to comb, chain links. Let's do the pendant. It's pretty small. Let's get this stuff out of here. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Here we go. It's gonna get crazy in here. Let's lift this guy. This is exciting. I'm excited. It is reheating the extruders. So now it's heating the platform. I guess that also warms up. You want all three of them hot. And those are the different temperatures, 230 degrees Celsius for the extruders and 110 degrees Celsius for the platform. 
You look at the nozzles, there's like a little bit of, a teeny little bit amount of plastic still coming out of them. Let's see, Let's see this. It stopped. So, okay, it started, and something's wrong. Oh, wait, no, nothing's wrong. This is... It's putting stuff down there. It's really hard to see. It is putting some plastic down. It's a very, very fine layer. It's making a bunch of cool noises. We pick the pennant, and it's throwing down these very, very fine layers of plastic. Very, very thin. One on top of the other. It's interesting. Is there a better angle we can get in there? Really hard to, to get a good shot of that. Oh, that's awesome. Hopefully it'll get in two colors too. That'd be awesome. It smells in a restaurant. Aren't they cool? Yeah. Listen to the noises. Like robotic noises. Yep, it's going for a second color now. That's amazing. So we are doing... Oh, you go, MakerBot. You go. This is so awesome. Okay, so it just finished. There it is. It took, it says build time, 13 minutes. So anyway, there it is. I guess you scrape it off or something. Let's do so we've made, we've made this little pendant and I cannot get it off. I, I'm not really sure what the process is, but it's, and it is really on there. Oh, man, I think it's hot. Huh, let's let it cool off a little bit. Okay, so we couldn't get this thing off. Um, I was tempted to pull this yellow tape off of the platform, but the truth of the matter is the yellow tape needs to stay on there. Um, it, it's protecting your platform. I could not get the pendant off, and, and the way it finally popped off was it cooled down, and I took a knife, and I just barely pushed on it on the edge, and it just finally popped off. And we're, I'm looking at the back side of it, and it is very smooth, and that's usually typically a pretty good sign that the platform is calibrated correctly. It's very, very smooth on the on the base of it underneath, a little bit rougher on the top where the extruder was working. But anyway, we have a nice little pendant here. Get better focus. Turn my ISO down. And so we just made this out of plastic. We're gonna try something else now. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna make is we're gonna make the little shark, Mr. Jaws. We'll hit start and we're gonna let it do its thing again. go wow it's like jam on this one is like jamming look how fast it does it it's crazy you, this room you know what this reminds you of before your time but um this reminds me of when we got our microwave when they when i was like seven or eight when they first came out and we would the whole family we would put stuff in there and we'd just be sitting here watching it like this you know because it was so amazing that you could microwave food like that and it would get hot. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think is it's like, I remember we got our first computer and the internet, that was so huge. And we would sit there forever and dial up and sitting <laughs> and waiting and waiting. It's funny. You know, and how much, how much has changed in advance. Like this is going to be 
don't even know like what the beef is doing to this. This is crazy. And, and the thing is, is this is. I'm not too impressed with all this gunk right here, but you can get some sandpaper and stuff. You can obviously clean it up, but it's actually pretty strong. You know, if you made something thick, you'd be pretty much indestructible unless you were like trying to break it. You know. So we just printed these chain links. I think it's still a little warm. Not so bad. But actually, that's amazing. It printed the links together like this. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, I know it's awfully noisy around here right now, but we just printed this bracelet. It's a stretchy bracelet. Um, it's really interesting. It's still pretty hot. I'm not going to pop it off until it cools down a little bit. But um, I'm real impressed with it. Some of the design isn't perfect. Some little parts of it are, are not perfect, but it's still very, very cool. Just made this bracelet. It's stretchy, very cool, very neat. And we're going to start another one. We're going to do the pet monster next. Look at that thing go. dragon we did in two colors and there's I don't know like pieces of it maybe it's not a perfect print kind of needs to be cleaned up but we'll just grab this guy <laughs> we can get him off he's really on there <laughs> there it is look how smooth that is on the bottom that's a good sign when you have this smoothness break these guys off and I think this stuff on the side of him will clean off okay too it looks like maybe the second extruder head just kind of grazed over it but anyway that's a dragon guarding his egg now that I'm familiar with some of the basics of 3d printing I'm ready to start looking around on Thingiverse to download in 3D print models others have created and shared. It's pretty amazing to see some of the things that are already uploaded on the internet and it's just going to get better. I've also started studying some basic 3D modeling programs that will allow me to create my own 3D printed objects and ultimately this is going to be necessary if you want to make your own stuff. You really have to know one of several 3D programs that will let you model. It's really exciting to finally dive into 3D printing, and I can only imagine the amazing advances we're going to see in both the technology as well as the creativity these devices are going to bring. Be sure to check out my blog for more 3D prints and insights as I learn more.